Hey, come on family. It's Pastor Joel here. Just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about a word that I've been hearing thrown around a fair bit lately. It's the word liberty. Now I looked online and, and found the definition of the word liberty. Liberty means the quality or state of being free. The power to do as one pleases. Freedom from physical restraint or freedom from arbitrary or despotic um, control. Uh, the positive uh, enjoyment of various social, political, or economic rights and privileges. Now, there's a number of things going on in our world right now uh, where people are using this term liberty as they discourse back and forth. But for a follower of Jesus, if you really believe in the words of the Bible, the Bible actually gives us a different definition of what liberty actually is. A biblical definition of liberty is, is uh, like the New Testament word that means liberty to do or to omit things having no relationship to salvation. True liberty by this word is living as we should, not as we please. There's this temptation to live according to what the world would say is liberty. As followers of Jesus, we're actually called to something greater and higher than that. In the book of Romans, Paul is writing to uh, the church that's there. And at the time that he's writing, there was this ongoing debate and conflict that was happening within the church. See, at this time, uh, meat that was used to be sacrificed to idols would often be sold in the markets afterwards for very cheap. And so some people would buy that meat uh, because it was so cheap. And there was this dispute amongst people within the church of some people who felt like it was completely fine to, to eat that meat. There was no problem. It wasn't against what God was doing in their lives. And others who really struggled with it because it became a real challenge to their faith. How could they eat meat when it was sacrificed to a false god? And so uh, if you read through Romans chapter 14, there's what's called the law of liberty or the law of love, where Paul says, listen, you can eat the meat, but if it's going to cause someone else to stumble, then your, your faith in Christ and your call to be a servant of God is, means that it's more important to, to care for those around you than just to simply do what you can do. And in Romans 15, 1 to 2, it says this. It says, we then who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not simply to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. Uh, Later in 1 Corinthians, again, uh, relating to this issue of whether you can eat meat or not eat meat, sacrifice to idols, what could we consume? 1 Corinthians 10 says this, I have the right to do anything. You say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything. But not everything is constructive. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. That's verse 23 and 24. And then verse 31 to 33. So whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God, even as I try to please everyone in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. So you may be thinking to yourself, why on earth are you talking so much about meat sacrifice to idols? Well, it's a great parallel for how are we as a church and how are we individually responding to what's going on in the world around us? True form of liberty is what I hope will become the reputation of myself and Eaglemont Church during this season as we continue to move forward together. As pastors, we're, we're currently praying, praying and focusing on how Uh, we can move forward and shepherd our church community in unity as we take steps uh, moving forward together in this season. That's God's desire, that we do this unified together. And in order for us to do this, we can't be focused on a, a really selfish or personal idea of liberty, but we really need to adopt and grasp that higher and better concept of what the Bible tells us liberty is. That liberty isn't simply about me getting what I want, But liberty is about me being able to either do or not do for the sake of my brother and sister or my neighbor. And so as we move forward together, can I encourage you? You have an opportunity. God has strategically placed you. He's placed you in a church community and he's placed you in a community in which you live where you have neighbors. Don't simply be fighting for what you can do. Look for the opportunity of what you can and can't do to be able to help those around you. Better be open to hear the gospel of Jesus. Love you, church. I hope that uh, what I'm saying today makes sense. 
And perhaps you can prayerfully be considering today, God, what would you say to me for what I can do? God bless you.